Awesome. Well, um, we'll go ahead and get started. And I know a few folks may continue to join us as we go, but, um, but appreciate everyone uh, joining us for the conversation today. And, um, and so excited to have our, um, our panelists here, um, Justin, Maria, and Rondell, uh, to share a bit more about their experience. Um, before uh, we jump into the conversation, I just wanted to introduce myself and, um, and also share a little bit more um, about Copricure and, and the kind of inspiration for this conversation today. So um, hi everyone, I'm Marielle. Um, I am a former public servant with the city and county of San Francisco. And, um, and before that I worked in technology. And um, when I joined the city and county of San Francisco, I had this experience of recognizing like, wow, uh, the public procurement profession is so collaborative. Um, everyone's always so willing to share um, and, um, and help. And there's a lot of benefit to sharing what we've learned um, and what we're doing to, um, to obviously produce better results um, for the public as well. Um, but I felt like as someone who had worked in tech and then stepped into government, I felt like walking into to city hall um, to, to sit down um, at my desk was a bit like um, going 30 years into the past when it came to the kinds of uh, technology that I had available. So, um, you know, as an older millennial, I felt like, okay, I can do pretty much everything on my phone, like look up the lyrics to Uptown Funk um, or, um, or Old Town Road. Um, and yet when it comes to making a purchasing decision, um, it's much harder to find that information. I basically had to rely on emails, um, phone calls, um, and scrolling through to different uh, websites. And so um, I, I left the city and county of San Francisco um, to start uh, Co-Procure. Um, because, uh, you know, it felt like there should be um, more and better tools um, to be able to use. Um, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't take us um, hours of, of, you know, phone calls and internet searches um, to make a buying decision or to leverage, um, again, that spirit of community and, and collaboration. So, yeah, again, as a, as a public servant, I was like, we deserve um, excellent and free tools for the work that we do. And it's totally possible and not that expensive to make those tools. Um, so I started Co-Procure to, to build those tools. And um, next slide, please start. Um, so yeah, we see ourselves as building the free technical infrastructure to support and empower that spirit of um, collaboration that is already so strong. Um, in public procurement. And it's that spirit of collaboration that we're gonna be tapping into today to swap um, you know, lessons learned, best practices, um, and, um, and delve into the benefits. Um, Co-Procure, uh, again, just very quickly, um, is a search engine for finding all of the contracts um, that you need in one place for free. So we aggregate and organize contracts from um, the federal government, the GSA, um, from dozens of national purchasing cooperatives like Omnia, Sourcewell, um, NASPA Value Point, and from state agencies, and as you'll hear today, local agencies as well. Um, and it's especially that kind of local to local sharing um, that I think um, we're super energized by and where there's a lot of value to add. Um, again, and just taking those great, that great work that we're already doing as public servants all the time in terms of calling each other, emailing each other, asking each other for help. Um, and, um, and making sure that that, has a, that knowledge has a place to live and it's a bit more scalable over time. So that's a bit about us. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, moving on, um, would love to uh, have you meet our panelists. And um, I'm gonna just ask them to spend a few minutes um, introducing themselves and, um, and, uh, and sharing a, a bit more about your experience um, in public servant, public service. Um, so Rondell, if, if you could um, go ahead and maybe kick us off and, uh, and just introduce yourself, that would be great. Sure. Thank you, Meryl. I really appreciate um, you coming in and hearing the song I had picked. <laughs> that was nice. Thank you. Uh, I'm a Daryl Hall, John Oaks fan, so I, I like their music. So anyways, thank you. I appreciate it appreciate hearing that when I came in. But hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate being here and being um, a part of this, um, this, this talk today. Um, my name is Rondell Schroeder. I work at Mount San Antonio College. I've been with Mount San Antonio College for over 30 years now. And um, I've had several different roles within the campus. And the current role that I'm in now is a procurement specialist where I deal with construction projects on our campus. I deal with all the contracts and I also deal with the fleet management um, as well. 
um, some maintenance type, uh, scheduled maintenance type funds as well. And um, so I, that's my wheelhouse. Um, I, I tend to go to Cobra Cure because a lot of times I'm looking for some way to save time on these construction projects because as you know, working with, if some of you know, um, working with construction, you have some really tight deadlines. And so um, having those cooperative agreements and being able to, to uh, find them uh, is very much a, a time saver for, for me and my college. And we also save money on the back end. So anyways, I'm going to turn this over to probably Justin, right, Meryl? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, that works. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Justin Sullivan. Uh, my current role is I lead system-wide strategic sourcing for the University of California system. Um, I've been in procurement for the uh, better part of the last 20 years, first with um, technology services providers uh, like Free Markets and Ariba, uh, but for the last uh, you know 10 or 12 years in higher education, uh, and really happy to see so many, uh, so, some UC people on the call with us today. Um, over the last several years, we've really embraced um, cooperative procurement as a part of our, um, our sourcing and, and go-to-market strategy. Uh, we like to create cooperative agreements that we then make available nationally, uh, but we are also always proactively looking for uh, cooperative agreements that we can use to make our, um, our procurement process uh, smoother and faster for our end users. Uh, so look forward to the conversation today and uh, and answer any questions that I can. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. And Maria, do you want to share a bit um, as well? And then I think we have a quick poll for the audience before we dig into the details of each of your experiences. as well. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Maria Perona. I have been here with the County of Orange for 16 years. I've been in government contracting for over 20 years. Um, I started my career at Raytheon. Um, I've now been um, appointed the county procurement officer for Orange County for the last 18 months. Um, we are a pretty large uh, agency, and the fact that we're decentralized has made sharing contracts really much more difficult than one would think. We have 24 departments and about 250 procurement professionals. And um, since taking this position 15 months ago, I've been trying to really increase the use of cooperative contracting across our county and beyond, which you'll hear about later. Um, we want to share contracts to create efficiencies, cost savings, but we also have a huge interest um, from the community and our board to better support our local and diverse spenders. But until just recently, I really struggled with finding a mechanism to um, share contracts across our county and even beyond, and even search for cooperative contracts out there available. So we were just kind of you know, Googling a contract and um, it just wasn't effective. So excited to be here and share um, our success stories. Amazing. Um, well, thank you all for that quick intro. And um, before we get into the details, I actually just wanted to take a minute and um, I know we don't have time to go one by one through uh, everyone who's joining us, but thought we'd do a very quick poll um, just to get a sense of um, level of um, kind of interest and goals around um, collaboration and 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 um, and when it comes to technology, um, what are the benefits? Uh, technology and collaboration. What are the benefits that you're most excited about? Cool. And I see responses coming in, and it's kind of fun to see which one's winning. But we'll we'll share those in just a minute. All right, almost everyone's participated. Great. All right, um, well, I think we can share these results now. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Can everyone see this? Cool, yeah, so it looks like um, there are a lot of potential uh, ways that, that technology can help us leverage the, the benefits of collaboration. Um, and, um, and it looks like overall the, the two um, that are most exciting for folks are around saving time and improving the experience of end users and departments, um, but also supporting local and diverse businesses. But as you can see, there, there's a bunch of reasons and it looks like pretty much all of them, um, there's some level of interest 
um, in um, in in leveraging uh, or taking advantage of these different um, of these different benefits. Um, so thanks everyone for um, for sharing. And um, now we did want to jump in and, and dig a little bit deeper, I think, into each of our um, panelists' experience. So I know Rondell, um, we'll, we'll start with you. And I think um, one thing that you mentioned uh, as you were kicking it off is around um, time savings, um, and um, in particular, you know, cooperative purchasing uh, being something that that has personally saved you time. Um, so I'm wondering if you can share a little bit more about um, your experience there and um, and how you've kind of maximized that benefit of cooperative procurement um, to, to save time. Sure. Um, a lot of times, I already alluded to this, that, you know, in construction, we have these um, time constraints. And um, recently, uh, fairly recently, we were having uh, a, a cooperative agreement that we thought we could use, which was, um, the uh, the CMAS agreement, which a lot of you may have heard, um, you know, that's something that people use. It's a common one to use. And so we thought, oh, well, we'll be able to use the CMAS agreement and save money and time. Um, however, when we dived into the CMAS agreement, it ended up being that um, there was some other restrictions and, and requirements, more so than our our bid process requirements. And so what that wasn't really gonna be the choice. So um, I didn't know what to do at this point. We were probably gonna have to go and go out to bid, but then um, our department was like, well, I need to order this uh, floor. It was a flooring project that they wanted. They needed the flooring right away because there was a lead time and it was gonna delay the whole project if, if I had enough, if we went out to bid for flooring. Um, so I jumped on uh, the Co-Procure site and started just searching up flooring. I don't know if you guys wanna pull up the site. Do you, do you feel like you can do that, Miro? I, I think we can go ahead and do that and, and just take a look at the search that you ran. So um, so yeah, do you wanna share a little bit, Rondell, about your experience um, and, 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 and guide us through it? And I know Star is driving. Yeah, so all I did was I just looked for flooring. I just put in flooring. And because I, I I just was like, I don't even know what contracts are out there because now I can't use the CMAS one. Um, and so then I put in the zip code and then um, I put in, uh, uh, you know, the search flooring. And so I know that we use SourceWell. So then I was, look, I was foc focusing on SourceWell contracts. And so uh, I found the CU contract because I know as a, as a being a, an agency that deals with um, a college that I would, they would have the similar uh, requirements within their contract. Um, so once I found um, the flooring, I, actually it was Tarquette flooring. I apologize. I, I searched Tarquette flooring. because I knew that we were looking for that particular supplier. And then the um, source well contract came up. I think it was that, that one. This one, yeah, uh, yep, mm -hmm. yep. And so then once I went in to look at the contract, I knew, um, and it's kind of funny because Justin, we found out later that you were the one that created the contract and I was able to use your contract because um, you added community colleges to your contract. So um, it saved the project. I, and I was, I was able to call the department like within two days and say, hey, you know what? We have a cooperative agreement. Um, we're able to move forward. Um, I, I did like a quick uh, search here. I just pulled up, um, you know, community college, I think it was our college, once I, I had the contract. Um, but yeah, then... so I, I, I think we have a, a couple of here stars. So I think if you go back, um, so there are a lot of options, which is great. Um, and it sounds like Rondell, um, sorry, if you go back star to the tab there. Um, and I think, uh, let's see, scrolling through, I know you, you mentioned, I think it was maybe, an, was it Omnia Partners? Justin, I think that was the contract, right? I believe it was SourceWell. It was SourceWell. Yeah. Our, the, the UC contracts are available through Omnia Partners. Oh, it is. I, I'm so sorry. 
No, hey, that's, that's I okay. misspoke. We, uh, we have a we was, have a lot of options, which is which I'm is so good. sorry. I, I I've been <laughs> I use both. We use Omnia and we use Sourcewell. So sorry. No, no, um, it's all good. So so I know you mentioned you sort of went into the docs here and you were able yes. to find and, and then I went in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I uh, clicked on the, the contract itself, and then I did a, a search really quickly of community college. And so then once I saw that they had community college was, in, was listed in their contract, I was like, oh, perfect. I know that we're going to be able to use this. Of course, I, I did more um, analysis of it before I, I called the department, but then I knew for sure that we were in the clear and we would, would be able to not have to go through that whole bid process. I was able to get the flooring for them um, and they, it was successful. They already, we've already processed the PO, it, you know, and they were able to order the flooring and they're actually going to be putting it in in about a month. No, I, I know um, it was kind of a funny experience when we when we first got together um, to hear, uh, I think Justin, it was a bit of a surprise to hear that Rondell, because uh, you hadn't met each other initially, right? That Rondell right. had ended up using your, using a contract um, that that you had, your team had created. So that was a fun, um, that was a fun surprise. Right. Um, so yeah, R Rondell, thanks for sharing that um, walkthrough. And um, I, I know, um, you know, look, like there's a lot out there and I think um, it is exciting to be able to aggregate it and to show all of the um, resources that you can use. And like you said, I think oftentimes there is this question of like, can I even use this? Like, how do I know if I can use this? Um, so being able to double check um, and confirm, um, get into the documents, you know, is, is super important. Um, so kudos to you for, for uh, doing that investigation and obviously Justin and your team for putting a contract together that was helpful uh, for an agency. Um, Rondell, I think a lot of folks on the call are probably familiar with um, with uh, you know piggybacking with with cooperative procurements um, and um, and certainly the time savings advantage you just walked us through in terms of like hey I would have had to uh, solicit this contract and it would have taken a while um, but one of the um, uh, benefits that popped up as well um, that I know it looks like some of our attendees are really interested in is the um, the experience for for end users um, so can you share a little bit more too about um, you know with with this purchase or with others. Um, how how this really kind of has an impact or affects your relationship with the um, end users in the various departments or um, uh, agencies that you serve within your organization. So you mean end users within my department, like with the, on my campus? Yeah, just like what's the impact? Because um, I know sometimes it's like, hey, how, how does actually doing this have an impact on our relationship? I know in procurement, it, it can oftentimes feel like we're always the ones saying no. Exactly. Uh, I was just going to say that down. most of the time, so, you know, yeah. most of the time um, purchasing is looked at in our whole campus is, oh, they're the ones that are going to tell us no. I want to order this, but they're going to tell me no. But you know, what's really nice is that being able to use cooperative agreements and how is just another option for me to be able to, you know, say, yes, we can do this. Um, and so when, when I was able to say yes to that department and say that, that we have this cooperative agreement, they were like, awesome. We don't have to change all of our, you know, schedule. We were able to stay on schedule. And, um, and so that, was one instance, but then there's just recently another instance where there's a child development center on our campus and the child development, um, they need this new equipment installed, but we have all of these um, state regulations that we have to follow in order to, you know, get this playground equipment in place. And it's been, it's been a real um, challenge but I, you know, as soon as the, the, the director came to me and said, you know, what do I, what can I do? I said, well, here are your options. And she's like, well, the, that cooperative agreement sounds amazing. I would love to have that because we only have like a one week or two week window of when we can install this play, playground equipment. So there's things like that, that happen all the time within um, my agency. And I'm able to provide that different option for them. Um, and it, it really is, um, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to be not the no person all the time, 
but you know I'm able to you know work something else out for them there's other options perfect yeah that that makes a ton of sense um well thanks Rondell for 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 sharing that experience and um now I want to shift over and um Maria I know um you're you're leveraging technology um to to um to do those things right to save time to improve kind of the end user experience um, but also to, to do something that's pretty new and exciting, which is to drive regional collaboration. And um, as you said before, to also um, uh, invest in supporting businesses in, in the region. So um, can you share a little bit about what that's looked like um, for, for you and, um, and, and your experience and, and how you're actually uh, working towards achieving that benefit? Oh, sorry, Maria, I think you're on mute still. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I will share a little bit about our journey here at the County of Orange. Um, shortly after taking this position, I was asked to brief our board um, on the goals I had for this position. So one of my long-term goals was to create an alliance of um, the 34 cities that would come together and collaborate in procurement. Um, we are big users of the collaborative or cooperative, large-scale cooperative um, nationwide contracts, but sometimes those bring some um, limitations like legal restrictions, scope restrictions, um, lack of focus on local and diverse. And um, sometimes the timelines of those larger co-ops can be problematic when they renew, it kind of slows you down. So um, we, I, we definitely wanted to look into to create an alliance of all 34 Orange County cities um, and, and share all the opportunities we have of procuring the same goods and services under the same constraints. So we want to take um, advantage of eliminating those duplication of efforts and taking advantage of our buying power as a region. Um, the board loved the idea and my long-term goal quickly turned into my short-term goal. Um, they wanted me to act on it immediately. They had me go on a roadshow for all the mayors in the next 30 days. So the mayors, the city managers, everyone was so excited about this, but I had no platform or mechanism <laughs> to drive this sharing of information. Um, so luckily the Capo Pasadena conference was um, coming up right as this all was occurring. Um, so I made it my mission to find a solution for our Alliance. I attended every single session, talked to every vendor, and I finally found Co-Procure. Um, they were perfect. They were the perfect solution and they were just as excited and passionate as I was about building this platform. So we sat, like we immediately sat down in the middle of the conference and started strategizing on how we were going to get this up and running. Um, so uh, we um, ended the conference, came back, started probably two days later, right? <laughs> um, yeah, very fast, um, which was awesome. Yeah, they developed our solution uh, um, in about five to seven business days. And um, it was truly unbelievable. The best part about it is it's free. I mean, my CFO loved that most, right? You know what? We're, we're moving forward on this huge initiative and it's not costing us anything. It's like a dream for a CFO. But um, anyway, we're going to demo what we put together for you today for um, the county and all of our cities. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I think Star is going to share screen and, and we'll take a look. So um, yeah, we built um, we built this page uh, together with um, OC uh, Procurement to support the Procurement Alliance. It lives on our website, our external facing website. Yeah. And it's um, it's essentially a version, um, and, and Maria, I know you can share as well, but I know we had um, a, a hot debate around like, what do you actually want to see here? Um, of course, we wanted to add Orange County's contracts. Um, so, so the default experience, I think, is that. And then um, I know you also felt strongly about connecting folks in the region with more than just Orange County contracts as well. Yeah, and the great thing about the solution is that you can, um, can, can, can am I driving or is someone else driving? 
Um, no, so, Star is driving, but um, but you can you can tell her what you'd like to search if you have searches. Otherwise, we can go ahead and run a couple demos. Oh yeah, you can run a couple demos. But one of like the great thing about this is my alliance can search just amongst us, our cities and county. They can then open it up to just California because a lot of our attorneys um, want us to go by California law, right? They will they'll only approve those that have been solicited in California, or we can open it up to national co-ops. So that is has been very very helpful yeah so so let's go ahead i think um we can just show an example and um i think star is going to search for maybe janitorial services um and um as maria mentioned um these check boxes um below um uh so yeah we, we sort of track the um the agencies that are within the county and and using um the product but if you're outside the county you can also go ahead and and, and use it as well um, and uh, the default setting is to have these boxes checked. So when users want to search, um, they actually find everything. But if we uncheck them um, first, we'll only see Orange County uh, Procurement Alliance member contracts. Um, so Star, if you want to go ahead and hit, hit um, that search. Uh, so yeah, we, we can see here the, the contract um, from Maria and her team um, for janitorial services. Click in, get all the documents. Um, and I know your team, Maria, has has uh, has been busy supporting um, members within the county as well as outside of it um, through through making all these contracts available. Um, Star, if we go back um, to the Procurement Alliance page and um, we check those boxes as other boxes, um, folks within the county now, of course, have the experience to see both Orange County Procurement Alliance contracts and the entire universe of contracts from across the state of California and all other states across the country in their, in their search. So if we go ahead and hit enter there, um, we now see a much wider set of options as well. So that's a bit about um, how, this, how this works. Um, if you wanna... Keep, keep scrolling through. There's a bunch of different options. Um, and um, and yeah, Maria, anything else to, to add there? Well, it was great. Our kickoff event was last month and Co-Procure came and um, offered a demo and live training. It was, it was very exciting to kick off with a um, platform already set up. So I'm super grateful to Co-Procure and that I found them at the Capital Company. Yeah, um, I know I asked our team for a little bit of data on this actually this morning as well. Um, and it looks like um, there are already more than 10 um, uh, agencies that search regularly from uh, this, um, this site on the OC Procurement Alliance page, um, including, of course, the county and various departments within the county, um, but also a handful of uh, those cities that are part of the Procurement Alliance, the cities and organizations that are part of the Procurement Alliance as well. Um, and, um, and I think uh, it's also pretty cool to see because Orange County has published their data and that data is available um, to uh, folks searching on Co-Procure across the country. Um, we've also seen that Orange County contracts are being viewed um, and utilized by entities outside of the county as well. So um, as far away as, you know, Wyandotte County in Kansas um, uh, and as close as, you know, City of Pomona, uh, Pomona, which is, I think is in LA County and city of Banning over in, in Riverside. Um, so, so pretty cool to see um, the contracts that are created within that region with vendors on, you know, that are local getting distribution um, uh, to the broader region and actually throughout uh, the country as well. One so, more exciting, exciting um, thing that happened is a couple of days ago, we released our first public records act response utilizing Co-Procure. So it was so nice to not have to dig and scan and send records, you know, you just send them a link and say, go ahead and search yourself, it's there. <laughs> so that was an amazing benefit that wasn't part of our initial goals of, of the Procurement Alliance and Co-Procure. So the benefits just keep coming in. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think we were so excited to, um, to pilot this with you and um, definitely as someone who's worked inside of, of government and in the tech sector as well for a while, I think um, going live in five business days is like the fastest uh, I've ever known anything to like any tech implementation to happen um, in government. So um, kudos to your team for moving so so quickly, and we're excited um, for the opportunity to build and, and see something new launch um, so readily as as well. Um, uh, as a note for others, we we are um, starting to make this experience available to other agencies. 
um, and um, having conversations with a few other um, uh, you know, counties, cities, um, uh, entities who, you know, if you do get a lot of requests from your neighbors, hey, can you share this contract? Hey, where do I find this contract? Um, and you want to save some time um, responding, we're, we're happy to partner with you to help publish and make that data available to your own end users at no cost. Um, and we're also starting to chat with state entities as well. I think if you've ever gone to your state uh, website and tried to use that, you you probably know it's not always the most user friendly experience um, for a local agency to find um, contract data there. So uh, excited about this as a next phase again for being able to aggregate and organize um, information in one place and um, and distribute it to the public procurement community uh, more more broadly. Um, so thank thank you, Maria. Okay, Justin, over to you. And um, I think you know uh, one of the things that that we were so excited to chat about is we've heard. Um, We've heard uh, obviously about a few of the benefits um, so far, saving time, improving the experience for end users, um, uh, promoting and, and supporting kind of uh, regional collaboration and supporting vendors within um, your region to grow and expand their business, especially you know, potentially more diverse um, and local businesses. Um, and I know you offer a, a slightly different perspective as well, um, which is um, you know, uh, co cooperative procurement can also be a way to disseminate best practices and, and share things that are working from one agency to another really quickly. Um, so we know you've participated in, in national cooperative contracts as a lead agency, but it'd be great to hear more about this. Um, and so if you can kind of walk us through, you know, how and why did you get to become a lead agency? Um, and, and how did you decide, you know, what you would be sharing um, with, with the, a wider, you know, national community um, in, in those contracts? Yeah, thanks. Uh, and it's good to be here again with uh, with everyone today. Um, you know, I think our our journey to our cooperative strategy um, is a really interesting one. You know, our role in system wide strategic sourcing for UC uh, is to sort of bring together the needs of our ten campuses, sometimes our five medical centers, uh, and we're also involved in the management of, of three national labs. So, um, you know, a big part of what we do is to facilitate the collaboration between um, those, those campuses, medical centers, and labs to create the supplier relationships that serve us across all of our locations. Uh, in addition to that, there's always been a high level of interest within higher education and collaboration uh, across the, the different components of higher ed, public higher ed in California, um, the, the 23 campuses that are part of Cal State. Uh, and then um, with the um, Community College Federation, there's over, I think, 112 different um, community college districts in, um, in, uh, in California. When uh, one of the things that we've tried in the past is to do RFPs together, right? So, so to say, um, you know, as a, as a combined entity, what are our requirements? How do we want to evaluate suppliers? And can we actually create these contracts together? Um, I know uh, from the experience of our team members, creating those contracts for the UC is very di difficult. Um, getting um, the requirements of each of our 10 different campuses, their stakeholders, uh, understanding the different dynamics. And so when you try to expand that group of people who are making a, a sourcing decision and creating a contract together, it's very difficult. And so what we wanted to do was uh, if, you know, what we, we decided is if we can create these contracts and make them available so that people can find and evaluate them, uh, then, uh, and then have a discussion about um, changes that might be needed in the supplier relationship at the margin to make it effective for them, uh, we can actually accelerate the collaboration uh, that we have with, with, other, um, with other agencies. And so, um, you know, what we viewed was, uh, was by serving as a lead agency and working with a cooperative uh, organization uh, that, that we could expand the influence of, of our contracts. Uh, some of the things that we try to do uh, in our cooperative uh, program are, 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 are when we offer national agreements uh, is include in, in those agreements uh, program elements for things like sustainability uh, or small businesses uh, so that um, it gives um, agencies that might be smaller and have kind of less time to invest in thinking through the structure of those programs, an opportunity to kind of plug into those programs, have them sort of pre-structured and ready to go, um, you know, when they, when they start to work with the supplier. 
Uh, so uh, the, the flooring example from Tarquette, a big part of a, a flooring relationship uh, is the recycled content inside the flooring. Uh, what happens with the flooring that's removed and, and ultimately will the flooring supplier take back um, you know, some of those things. We're able to incorporate a lot of those things into the structure of our programs and make them as successful. Um, and we've been able to grow very fast. Uh, you know, currently, um, the University of California um, sponsors more than 50 uh, national contracts that are used by um, over 1,600 agencies across the country. Uh, so it's, it's, been, it's been pretty successful. Um, it's also expanded the way that we consider using cooperative agreements. Uh, you know, the um, purchase requirements within higher education um, are very diverse. Uh, and we have a lot of novel um, type of requirements that come into our buying organizations every day. Uh, and if we're able to quickly discover uh, cooperative agreements for which contracts have been competitively bid and, and are, are just available for us, it can, can significantly accelerate um, our ability to respond to that request and meet the needs of our stakeholders quickly. Oh man, there's so much good stuff in there um, that I wanna I wanna go back and, and call out a few things um, and dig just a little bit more. I think the first um, point that you made around um, really being able to play like a leadership role. Um, I know a lot of times um, it, it's it's really helpful when organizations have the resources, um, the expertise, the purchasing power to um, to to really craft kind of a new or best in class. Um, approach to making a purchase. Um, I know this has come up in my own conversations with with uh, with friends more recently because um, I have a handful of friends that really care about um, you know upgrading um, our uh, our infrastructure to be more climate friendly. And it's like, hey, you want to know how you do that? It's all about procurement. Um, and um, when it comes to uh, things like sustainability and goals that we have, um, you know, I I, I think um, procurement is kind of the unsung hero around how do we take that policy goal, that policy objective, and actually translate it into practice, not in decades, um, but you know, in the span of, of, of years or maybe even faster. So um, yeah, I, I think it is worth calling out you know, the sustainability elements. Um, uh, the, and I know, um, Justin, you know, your, your team, I'm sure, did a ton of work and research to really understand how to create and craft um, that, that solicitation. So I don't know if you have anything else to share there, but I think um, it's, a, it's a cool and I think overlooked call out to think about how we actually are able as a whole ecosystem to move the field forward by sharing up and kind of specializing or investing in um, bringing to market new solutions yeah. by kind of sharing the R&D budget, so to speak. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think uh, I think that's a great example. I, you know, we're very lucky because of our size and the support that our institution has for procurement and supply chain uh, to have um, to have a number of resources at our advantage when we go to market. Uh, so, um, you know, when we're going to market for strategic sourcing, I am lucky to be able to have facilities category managers who are looking at the supply markets and understanding the capabilities of suppliers. Uh, I'm, I am lucky to be able to work with our campus procurement organizations who then get us access to the facilities directors who bring, bring in the operational expertise that really shapes what are, the, um, what, are the, what are kind of the deliveries and inventory programs that we need to be able to successfully deliver our missions. And then when it comes time to consider sustainability, um, I'm able to incorporate some of the institutional goals for zero waste and, um, and reducing carbon emissions that we have as an institution, uh, but also work with experts and, and, uh, and professionals who really kind of understand how sustainability impacts a certain category. So I'm able to bring those resources to bear uh, and create a, a program that we hope is going to be best in class in terms of how it addresses those, those dimensions of, of, of the bids that we do. Yeah, that's that's excellent. I think it's one of our goals as an organization as well to um, to help inform where that innovation and, and those resources get directed. Um, I know it can be tough, to, you know, when you're in a position of leadership at these organizations to think, okay, do I is it worth running another um, process in, an, in a category that is established? Like, what can we add here? There are new vendors, new approaches that that we can um, that we can bring um, uh, into the market. Um, or, or is it worth you know, dedicating the time to create a new category or solve a problem that hasn't yet uh, been tackled? So that's one thing, again, I think we're having one place to share that information or to actually just see, hey, what's already out there? Is it worth investing our time here or over here? Um, we hope will be useful for the entire ecosystem. 
Um, and then one other thing too, and I think um, I'd, I'd, I'd actually open this up to all of our panelists because I think you'll have different, slightly different perspectives. Um, but Justin, I think you touched a little bit on how um, kind of the cooperative uh, procurement strategy has evolved over the years, um, you know, from your perspective in terms of, hey, you know, we don't just um, serve as a lead agency and, and, and consider the, the, the portfolio that we, um, that we uh, you know, create with national uh, cooperative partners, um, but we actually also leverage agreements when it's strategically valuable uh, to be able to do so. So I don't know if you have any comments in terms of like the shifts that you've seen um, in that strategy or how it's evolved um, during the time that you've that you've been in um, your role. But if you have comments there, and I, I know Rondell, we chatted a little bit about this before too, around just like, man, it feels like the space is exploding. Uh, there are all these options now available um, and, and how your organizations are kind of responding um, to all of that choice and some of the other pressures in the procurement um, world more broadly. Yeah, I think I think for us, the, the way that it's evolved is thinking about cooperative agreements um, as, a, as a way to sort of address spend, even with all of the resources that we have in procurement, uh, it, we're not able to get to every category. Uh, and uh, we also think about, um, about um, whether the opportunity to create value with the supplier is in um, going through a competitive process, which is essentially comparing capabilities, or is it in actually in, in getting to a point where you can have collaborative discussions with suppliers and think about how you integrate your supply chains and, and how you, um, you know, how you work together to kind of serve your 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 stakeholders. Um, you know, when we started in this process, you know, and started think used to be when we thought ten years ago about um, cooperative agreements, it would be kind of a have we done this? Can we do this? And um, can they get a better price than us? And uh, it, you know, now I think it's a more balanced evaluation about you know is this something that we want to invest in? What is the value we want to get out of this relationship? And can it accelerate our organization? Awesome, thanks, um, Rondell. Anything to add there? I know um, it, it sounds like um, you know cooperative procurement um, has also evolved, you know, how you think about leveraging co-ops has evolved um, at your organization as, as well. <clears throat> yeah, whenever um, I first started uh, way back when, it, 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 our agency was kind of like a silo where we had this process that we created and then we had to stick to it. And this is the process. You know, we, we have to stick to the process. We're very conservative and, and so forth. But over the years, we were able to open up and um, you know, start collaborating with other colleges. Also, technology um, share. You know that technology changes um, were so quick, we couldn't keep up with you know just sticking to our silo and sticking um, you know to the same process. We had to start venturing out and and allowing things to to kind of occur naturally. And so, as long as we were showing that we were still making our requirements. Um, you know, reaching out to do to doing these cooperative agreements. As long as we were showing that to our leadership and educating um, everybody out there that we're not changing our process, really, we're just um, making it more efficient and 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 um, using you know this cooperative agreement, we can piggyback off of it and not have to do it on our own and be on our own agency. Just you know, be able to collaborate and 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 look at other colleges. I see more and more of that happening, especially with the pandemic. It, it even exploded more to the fact that we had to start reaching out and seeing what other colleges were doing. We didn't even know what we were gonna do with PPE and how we were gonna get it here and how, how this was all gonna transpire. So we all had to reach out together and kind of do the kumbaya, you know, like, what are we gonna do, you know? And so it was so nice to be able to reach out and and and. And, and it still continues to, to this day is that we're still reaching out with one another. Hey, what can we do here? Um, hey, you know, the supply chain is broken right now and for our vehicles. What do I do? Do you guys know any cooperative agreements? And so you, you just have that and, and being able to use co-procure to be able to search. And that was never an option. We usually had to 
you know, take time to go try to search something like that on our own. So it's just like, it keeps evolving and keeps, it keeps bonding people together. And I think that that's where I see it going now. It, it, it's more of like, you're not in this little silo. You're not just this one agency and you were the only one that has to come up with a solution on how to buy something. It's not that anymore. It's going out and saying, oh, you know what? How is, uh, you know, you know, Chafee buying? How is El Camino buying? How, you know, how did they take care of their testing? How did we had to bring testing here onto the campus? How did they do that? You know, they were the first ones to get, you know, world back to work, the uh, cooperative agreement with that. And they were able to get that off the ground. I was like, we got to get testing here. So how do we do that? And so that's that. I don't see that going away. I just see that that that's enhanced the ability to be able to purchase. And I see that as the, as the way that we're going to work in the future. Yeah. We're, we're so excited too. I think um, the opportunity to do that both at a hyper local level, like Maria and her team in, in the county have done and kind of share kind of peer to peer within a region, but then also just as easily reach out across the country um, and get that information as well. So it, it feels like a very exciting moment. Um, and, and, um, and there's, there's a lot still left, I think, to do, which, which we also know, and, and we're excited about too. Um, I, I do want to leave a couple minutes, um, for, uh, folks that are joining us in the conversation to ask some questions or to dig into more of the, um, you know, the experience of our panelists. I know I could continue nerding out with you all, um, well beyond the time that we have, um, allotted, but, but just want to do a quick check and see, I, I know, I think folks had a few questions. Um, so we'll give some time and space to questions if you have it. You can either chime in and unmute yourself if you want to ask directly, or you can drop a question in, in the chat and our team will, will help to, um, to monitor there. Oh, good. Yeah, I love this one and I always forget to talk about it. How is Copacure financially sustained if it is free for groups to use? Great question. It's like, what's the catch? Um, how, how does Copacure make money? Um, so... The very simple answer for now is we don't. Um, we raised a bunch of venture capital. This is also just a fun, um, a fun part about being here in, in Silicon Valley um, uh, and the ways you, you get to actually build businesses can be quite different. So um, I went and I said, hey, uh, investors, you know, there's actually this whole space um, with, uh, with public servants trying to do amazing work that actually don't have tools at all for all of this, you know, um, for, uh, for all of this great work that they, that they do. And I was able to raise, um, uh, venture capital to build this business. Um, we have a hard line of like, we don't want to sell to you public entities, um, because we don't want to have to be procured by you. So I think one of the main limitations so far um, uh, in, in actually making a single place to go for all this information has been, um, you know, access being barred to public entities, participation being barred, um, because you have to be procured. So, um, in the future, we, we, we expect to monetize on the supply side. Um, we don't know exactly the shape that that will take. Um, and we're fortunate to not have to think about it, um, in this immediate moment and to be able to focus on just building out the great product. Um, we can assure you, um, uh, that we do not, um, we will not be charging public entities. Um, we think it should be free forever to have access to this, what is public information. Um, and we think there's an opportunity to, uh, create value um, on the supply side while still um, while still presenting and aggregating as much information as possible. So um, stay tuned on that. We've built out a great advisory board uh, as well as public procurement staff who will continue to advise us as we start to, to work on monetization. But we're very fortunate that it's not our top priority. Um, we think of our, ourselves a bit like Google in that in that way. Um, there's another one around will Cobrecare issue its own cooperative agreement. So we are not a cooperative. Um, I think in the future, we could play a really interesting role in feeding back the data um, that we see on the platform to public entities that are thinking about making procurement decisions. So, um, you know, Maria's, Maria's team at Orange County, um, you know, hey, Cobra here, like, what are we seeing in terms of searches coming from Orange County? Where are their gaps? You know, should we make a contract in this category, a contract in this category? Um, we hope to be able to give Maria and her team that kind of data um, to decide, hey, where do I have my, my staff and my teams actually work? Um, and we hope eventually, I think, to be able to help um, work backwards to new agreements from what's going well. So what I mean by that is I think 
oftentimes we lose the thread of who's even piggybacking on this local agreement. Um, so for instance, for Orange County, um, you know, if, if we see a hundred agencies are actually piggybacking on a contract that Maria has created, letting Maria know that so that the next round of that um, uh, contract, you might choose to reach out to those agencies and get maybe a pulse on their demand or their requirements to kind of leverage that purchasing power as the next as the next stage. So we 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 hope to be informing um, that process. Um, but no, we do not make our own uh, cooperative agreements. We are not a co-op. Um, we see ourselves as the infrastructure for um, sharing and and uh, you know like facilitating um, the sharing of information. Oh, great. Um, and and I see um, we love this. So I, I will say, Becca, actually, can you just raise your hand and wave so folks know who you are? So Becca and then Star, if you could do the same thing. So these are two of our teammates um, and um, they, uh, they help us collect input from um, public entity users, like, um, like the comment that just came in around, is it possible to include filters like prevailing wages or if federal clauses are included in the search function? Um, and if yes, can it also include specific federal agency requirements like FTA? Um, this, we love these kinds of suggestions and feedback um, because they actually help shape the product development. So I would say we're, um, most everything is possible. It's just a matter of actually getting a pulse on where it falls in the product roadmap um, and how many other users hope to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, so we certainly invite your feedback and in fact have just started to formalize and create um, at a regular cadence opportunities for users um, of the product to give us that feedback and to participate in user research and feedback sessions with our product team. Um, so connecting the engineers and the product managers with your feedback. Um, so the, the short answer there is yes, um, but uh, the longer answer is we'd love more of that feedback. So if you have ideas or want to be able to surface your needs better to our team, we want to make sure we're actually building something that works for you. Um, and we're very interested in understanding uh, what your kind of top needs are, again, so that we can build that into the product overall. Cool. Okay. And then I see, are there certain sectors that are more amenable to the cooperative agreements and some that are more resistant? In my organization, we utilize a lot of healthcare GPO agreements. Um, I don't know if our panelists have, have a comment there in terms of like, um, are you saying that there are certain sectors or maybe even certain agencies within your broader or departments um, within your broader uh, organization that are more open to or tend to utilize cooperative contracts more frequently? Yeah, I, I think um, I think the, the concept of cooperatives in the public sector really in a lot of ways follows the growth of cooperatives in the healthcare sector. Uh, so um, if anybody, I know there's a couple of people from healthcare procurement uh, on the call. Um, a lot of a lot of the procurement that goes into um, our clinical supply chains, uh, you know, in, in our hospitals, uh, really is run through um, large cooperative programs um, that that really try to um, help um, health centers manage cost. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways. Um, public procurement cooperatives follow, um, you know, that principle and are, are kind of a little bit earlier in their, in their growth curve, but a lot of the same value drivers apply. I think one other comment that I've just observed, and I don't know if, if other panelists have, have, have more to join or even participants on the call, is um, we see a lot of cooperative contract agreement utilization for categories where buyers expect to find something for a, you know, in a cooperative agreement category. So, um, you know, furniture or maintenance and routine um, operations equipment or, um, you know, janitorial supplies or, or, or services. Um, I think what we're starting to see is actually there are agreements that are available um, in a much wider set of um, both service categories and commodity categories than we might expect. So I think this is one trend where like, I think traditionally folks have kind of thought about or been open to utilizing cooperative contracts um, for sort of more well-established categories like furniture or office supplies. And I think we're seeing at least again on, on Cobra here from a search and like a data perspective, um, there's actually demand for and, and availability of contracts in many more categories um, than you, know, you might actually expect. 
Um, I think one other note is we do see there's so much difference. And I know Darren has has actually joined us in conversation previously around, you know, how do you um how do you how do you work with like your executives um, you know, and, and help to advocate for the value of collaboration and, and utilizing, you know, um cooperative agreements where appropriate. Um, uh, because it can be a challenge, I think, to get executive buy-in sometimes for um, leveraging agreements or, or piggybacking. So making the case, I think, uh, can be challenging. I, I think we, we probably can and should have a whole other conversation again about that because it is a fascinating topic and I know we have great experience there. But, but that is the one other thing I will say, um, Michael, that we've seen come up um, as a challenge for some organizations where it's less specific to the category and more actually specific to how well does your executive team kind of understand um, and buy into the value of collaboration. Um, I think we, we definitely have seen sometimes there can be a more traditional approach of, no, no, I want you to get a bid for it because I need the price, the actual cost to be the lowest possible and not being able necessarily to take into account all of the time and the investment that will be spent actually creating that new uh, contract as well. So there's there's more work I think to do in, in sort of advocating and, and putting metrics behind um, the, the strategy that goes into when to choose to use what's already out there versus when to go out um, and, and do it on, on your own. There's a lot of nervousness too in our organization about external funding sources. There's not always a lot of clarity when you're grant funded or state funded or have federal funding, um, whether it's allowable to use the cooperative. And it's very difficult to get an answer on, yes, you can use a cooperative, no, you cannot. So it's becoming um, more readily included in the funding source guidelines, but historically it was not. So it was like a huge risk, like, okay, can we use a cooperative? Are we going to get, you know, lose funding for it? So that's been um, a huge issue and, and, and a big point of contention and nervousness here in Orange County, but we're seeing that slowly um, move towards allowing it. Yeah, that's a great point. I remember around, um, you know, when COVID had just started and everyone was looking for PPE, there was a lot of anxiety around, hey, if I use this contract, you know, can I get FEMA? reimbursement or use FEMA funds later on. And um, I know sometimes even the actual, you know, um, entities that created the contracts couldn't necessarily say or didn't want to say because it was still kind of open to interpretation. So the legal interpretation can definitely be a challenge as well. Great. Well, I know we're, we're over the hour, um, uh, but, um, but you know, happy to stay a few extra minutes if folks still have questions or want to hang out. And again, just thank you all so much for joining us and a special thank you um, to all of our, our panelists um, for the incredible work that you're doing and, and for taking time um, out of your day to, to share it with the rest of us. So really appreciate your, your time and, um, and insights today. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Thank you. May you have an uptown funk kind of rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> you <All> too. Right. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye bye. Thanks.